Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to part 4, I believe, of the machine learning journey. So, in the last one, I actually built a model um, of the machine learning translation uh, model with RNN, of course. And then, just by calling model.predict, I am indeed able to predict uh, the English corresponding translation text to the Spanish text input that I, um, that I submit. So, but we want to build this into an actual app. We can't just be, you know, um, opening up the Python file and then every time, you know, put it in our Spanish text. So we'll be actually building a GUI. And this GUI hopefully can store some of the Spanish translation text. Um, yeah, so basically the GUI is going to be really simple. We can input a uh, string of Spanish text. And then when we click submit, it's going to call the whole model.predict function. And then it's going to output the English text. Um, without further ado, I'm just going to get to it. Uh, so today I'll be learning about actually how to build a GUI in Python. I have done some research while I was in school. And then turns out that this thing called Kivi, K-I-V-I, -I, is a pretty good uh, GUI building app. So I think I'm not going to do any more research and I'll just stick to that and I'll build an application with Kivi. So yeah, I'll be learning some Kivi and hopefully building it in this uh, video. I right, guess super excited here. So basically, I set, I set up a simple system just by uh, learning the Kiwi GUI program real quick. Um, turns out that there's a really easy way to lay out your stuff. It's just by calling um, box layout and then you're just adding these widgets. So for example, this right here is a label, this right here is a text input, this right here is a button, and then this right here is a um, label too. So this really simple system is literally, I can just type in something here, and then the internal memory for this thing, which is text input, we can refer to this from anywhere just by doing self dot um, text input, whatever you name the text input dot text. And then so when I press button dot, this button right here, I set it so that it's going to turn this text right here into this text right here. Um, yeah, that's it, what all I'm doing. But now, of course, I'm going to implement the machine learning part, and all I really have to do is to, um, when I press that, it's not only going to, you know, display here, but it's going to run this through the, um, through the function first, uh, through the function of uh, model.predict, which is the RNN. Um, function and then it should uh, predict this pretty well so let's give that a try and also I probably want to add in a few features so for example when I press enter it should click the button for me instead of having to press the button every time because you know that's going to increase your efficiency by a little bit somewhat um, not a lot of any other problems to be honest maybe add in a little um, yeah just there's gonna be new features to come. But now let's implement that. So to be honest, I don't think I even did the predict thing in the machine learning code myself correctly. Um, it was really weird. I think I was working on this yesterday. If you saw the part three of the video, I mean part three of my journey, you'll see what I was trying to do. Um, the tokenizer, when I was trying to tokenize that specific prediction I put in myself, it creates a new tokenizer instead of using the old one. So it is actually creating new integers for these inputs instead of using the old integers that we created with um, the tokenizer.fitOnText function I believe. So it got a little bit weird but I believe I can work through this and I'll get both of these done today. Let's go. So the way I'm thinking this right now is that we can maybe train that tokenizer again on the whatever 10,000 pieces of data that we're training on. 
and then um, use that tokenizer and just do prediction and I think it should work but the thing is of course when building the GUI we don't want to load or we don't want to create the tokenizer every time we do have to load the model every time but I don't want to do the um, make the tokenizer every time so I have to find a way to sterilize or save that tokenizer and it should be pretty easy it's, a, it's, it's an object after all so let me see what I can do but right now I need to create the English tokenizer which I kind of forgot how to do I, I wrote a command for it but I'm not sure this should be it Okay, so at this point, I got the, um... <sighs> I got a prediction to work, so the thing I was missing was that when I do encode it, I used to encode it into a normal array. So uh, I encode into a list. I mean, I made a list as a source, but I'm supposed to make it as to a NumPy array. And so when I do create the source like that, like a numpy array it does work it does not work when you create a list so creating a list will be like without the numpy array part so now everything works it makes the prediction and all i gotta do is to translate this onto this gui thing um not a lot of difficulties difficulties one i can imagine is how do i sterilize the token yeah that's probably it Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Miss it. So pick up dump, and in my example, I would instead use a dump. Um, so I can save this tokenizer object by just doing this right here. Tokenizer, and then I'll name this um, English Ink Token. And then, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't know about the um, protocol, protocol part. Dump span tokenizer and name is span token. So now let's do this. Right. What is a right attribute? So I think we gotta open a file first and then save into that file if I'm not misleading. And then let's just let's just um let's just define the Spanish link. Let's go. Nice. So, um, we can actually, let me think about this. I don't, I think that for this 8 and 5 thing, we can just, um, we can just define it straight up in the, in the key vibe. How do you pronounce this after all? How do you pronounce this? Kiwi. 
kiwi kiwi um yeah we're gonna just make it inside of here because it's nf5 it's not gonna change that much unless we change the model itself okay so now we can load it everything becomes a lot more easier uh all right time to try to implement this code into that well let me take a break first Oh, I guess I see the problem. When I do run in here, I think I'm calling it like the console where I hear routes to whatever, but it uses Anaconda's packages versus if I were to run in the command prompt, it uses the pip packages. But I think I do want to install it on pip because Anaconda is like a virtual environment and it might not like scale properly. And I'll see though. But it did turn out that I never had QS on pip for the some of the QS packages. So okay, stuff for making sense though. Wait, to verify, I'm gonna run it here. I was running this on a command line that says that QS is not found, but if I run it here, um, it might find it because it's in Anaconda, I believe. So let me run this. Yeah, like that works. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see the problem there. But I want it on pip. I want it on pip for sure. So now this works. I can actually control C out of this, but. Um, I'll just run this whole thing. Yeah, now it works. I see. That's really interesting. Okay, so that all works. Um, I don't need this. I don't need stuff like that. I don't need. I don't need a back end. I don't. I think the back end is changed. Don't need that. Don't need dump. Um. Oh, it's still gonna call TensorFlow back end, which takes a little bit of time. This already. Okay. And I can just do model. Yeah, now I can do my stuff. So what I don't do now is that when I press translate to English, it's not gonna it's not gonna print out anything, but I don't want an error to occur. So model is not defined. Uh, I never loaded the model, so. I think it's this right here. Ooh, what happened? 
Your CPU supports instructions that this TensorFlow binary was not compiled to use. A V X two. Um. No idea where that came from. Maybe I can't print. Maybe. Then I'll just knock these out below. Oh, it did print something out. Let me look this arrow up. That's true though, I want to use the CPU version I think. Um, I gotta think about this. Well, it works though. That's good. So, hold up. So let's, um, <laughs> let's... Let's make this return something. So there should be only one translation up there. So I can just return the translation here. Print the translation here, maybe. It's gonna have that like lagging thing, and then it should say it should have an output. And in this case, it said go, which is not supposed to make sense at all. Me llamo Andrew. It's also really slow if you realize. This is horrifically slow. List this is running for me. Self the alpha label dot text. That was horrible. Okay, okay, okay. Hola, me llamo Andrew. So somehow it translates to call, call me, okay. Yo tengo mucho dinero, I have a lot of money. It shows us I have money money. It's okay though, it works. It works now. I'm really proud of this. Alexa, I never called you. Okay, that works. Well, that's gonna be it for this video, I think, because I did get to implement this. In the next video though, I'll be optimizing this a little a lot better. And maybe ask a lot of stack overflow questions. So see you guys on the next one.